Our beaches are red tide free, but it's hard for people along the Gulf Coast to forget what it was like. The toxic algae bloom killed thousands of fish and cost them millions of dollars. Politicians have promised action in the legislative session, which starts actually today. ABC Action News reporter Sarah Hollenbeck is looking into whether they'll actually deliver on that. Just the thought of red tide makes Norma Jean Graf nauseous. It was just putrid. In September, oh no, she yelped in horror looking at the number of dead fish Gosh. floating behind her Treasure Island home. Her husband resorting to unconventional methods to blast the fish away. <laughs> Dylan Hubbard is still dealing with the impacts of red tide four months after the toxic bloom cleared our coastline. And we still have people call. Just yesterday I took an email. How, how's the red tide there? Businesses just starting to bounce back. But it will come again. And when it does, we'll hope we'll be ready for it this time. Now Pinellas County residents are teaming up to encourage Florida leaders to keep their promises of investing in red tide research and forecasting. It's the very first topic Governor Ron DeSantis addressed in his State of the State address. Now is the time to be bold. We cannot leave for tomorrow that which we can do today. DeSantis replacing every member of the South Florida Water Management District Board and promising another $1 billion in funding for water restoration. Graf desperately hopes it'll keep this ah. from ever happening again. This is a serious thing. You just can't blow it off. In Pinellas County, I'm Sarah Hollenbeck, ABC Action News. Pinellas County is also hosting a Red Tide Summit to talk about local efforts to prevent red tide. That's coming up on March 28th at the Sheraton Sand Key Resort in Clearwater.